Well, as we get back to our lesson, um, we were uh, going through and I was talking about and at the end, and I had to change gears again here, how numbers, you know, explain something about who God is and what he is. Um, there is, uh, how can I say, uh, God has placed within numbers. God has given us the idea of numbers. I mean, he has given us, uh, you know, uh, everything that basically guides uh, time uh, is controlled, of course, by by numbers. And these things have always been, uh, and uh, the ancients uh, told time, and they had their different hours of the day, um, and they had the night watches, and uh, usually night watches uh, would start at midnight, and they would be, um, there would be uh, basically uh, three watches, um, uh, or uh, two watches um, uh, during the night, uh, three hours apiece, and um, then you would uh, come to the morning hours. Uh, so uh, at six o'clock, you know, uh, you would basically start um, six to seven, you know, uh, seven to eight, and eight to nine. So when we have in the scripture about the third hour, uh, we are looking at a um, concept of uh, being, you know, nine o'clock in, in the morning. And uh, we have that comment made uh, on the day of Pentecost. It seems like uh, the Holy Ghost came and poured out on them at um, that at the beginning of, of the day. And it moved from being uh, just uh, in an in an upper room area to uh, into the streets where uh, the crowds that were in uh, that had come to Jerusalem for the religious holidays um, were uh, all able to see them uh, in what had happened with him the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. So again, uh, numbers are important and to the Lord. And many people have uh, taken numbers to a place of, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, uselessness. Um, and they have uh, trying to use numbers to figure out um, when exactly the Lord's going to return. And that day or hour, uh, as the scripture has said, is not for us to know. And that was something that was to be hidden uh, to humanity. And, uh, and that was not to, how can I... Uh, been released to the consciousness of men. Um, we can see basically uh, what uh, time is coming. Um, that, in other words, uh, we can know that's that the time of his of his uh, return is close due to uh, certain things that are told to us in the Bible 
Uh, but the scriptures tells us that we are to look up. In other words, that means to look for his appearing, um, uh, be uh, looking forward in anticipation um, and not in uh, fret or dismay. Uh, and so that's, that is important. So these, you know, we've got 12 months of the year and there is, uh, there's a lot that can be said about this. Uh, again, uh, God's using these numbers. Um, you know, 12 has indicated throughout um, history and within scripture, uh, it, it has something to do with uh, God's kingdom, his people, uh, royalty, okay? Um, uh, you know, in Revelation, it, it, it tells us uh, there in uh, uh, the first chapter that we are to be kings and priests uh, unto the Lord. This is, this is important. So uh, 12 will be always coupled to what we see that number uh, in the heavenly. Uh, we will see it. Uh, we will see it times two, and um, this goes back to the 24 elders that are around the throne. Uh, this goes back all the way to uh, Levitical law, and um, where there were uh, basically the, there was 24 Levitical uh, elders, and what I mean by Levitical means they were of the tribe of, of Levite, the Levites were the priests, um, and they were considered um, a watchman, and they were stationed around the uh, temple, and uh, at the, you know, at various places, and they were to um, basically uh, check those who were coming in. In other words, you just didn't have uh, the, you know, a single doorkeeper. Um, in respects to that, we see that word used in the King James Version. And let me give you some insight on that. That is, a, it's, there's a little bit more involved in what we see at hotels with a guy that stands there at these punch hotels and is the doorman, okay? Um, though it, you know, it comes from a concept of royalty uh, and, uh, you know, keeping an eye on those who come and go. Uh, this idea was these, these men uh, had the responsibility to check those, to check people uh, before they came into the uh, temple. And their responsibility was that they could not let anybody in the, uh, uh, inner court uh, without being um, without being checked whether they are eligible and there was various things to check one was to check for leprosy some other diseases um, that are indicated that you can actually see by the face. Uh, you can read through Leviticus and you can see all the different things. Um, not everything 
that stopped a person from going into the temple was leprosy. Um, if you had, um, if you only had one leg or if you, there was a, a deformity, if there was some sort of uh, sickness uh, that could be seen in your face um, and all these different things, you were not um, uh, allowed in. And, uh, you know, their job is to question and to inspect. So this is uh, what I'm getting at. You know, you see the um, those who are around the throne. Um, people have used it to say, listen, well, this is, uh, uh, you know, the representation of or the princes of the 12 tribes of Israel. And uh, we have uh, the um, 12 apostles, okay, on the other side. Uh, this is, um, how can I say, a bit, uh, you can, I think you could probably use that and say that in a lot of ways, but again, if we're dealing with the temple um, and, uh, and we have a basically a uh, heaven, there's heavenly temple that's given to us in Revelation uh, and its description, um, you will probably cl be closer to uh, uh, truth to use the Old Testament law in the understanding of who those 24 elders are. So again, 12, you know, plus 12, uh, these different things uh, we see again in Revelation and just going with numbers that you are familiar with, um, 666. Um, uh, seven has always been a uh, type of completion um, uh, used in the concept of uh, perfection. Uh, it's uh, always uh, been um, something that is uh, quite important. Um, in its um, representation uh, to, uh, you know, the Sabbath, it is holy unto the Lord. Uh, all the all this, the the uh, Sabbaths or uh, the rest, uh, we see it used in the New Testament. Um, uh, in one occasion. Uh, that it is used and translated from the from the um, uh, how can I see Aramaic to to the Greek to English and it comes out as rest. Uh, but if you go back to it, um, you're going to see an a uh, an old Hebrew word of Sabbath. So Sabbaths were uh, holy days. Uh, holy days meant that they were separated unto God. There was certain requirements for these holy days. These holy days were um, uh, had to be acted out as prescribed uh, in um, uh, the Old Testament law. Uh, each of these holy days or holy weeks um, or holy years, okay, would have to be, uh, in other words, there's Sabbath years, okay, uh, Sabbath days, Sabbath weeks, okay? And so I, I need to, again, ex explain that to you so you you're not confused. So this means rest 
but it also means holy, okay? It's interesting that rest comes along with, uh, with being holy. Uh, they seem to be spoken together as one uh, in the scripture. And these things are quite, again, they, this explanation is quite key to what, um, how can I say, the kingdom of God um, within us. Okay, uh, where we become part of that kingdom. In other words, we become the temple, the dwelling place. Okay, uh, the kingdom is where the king dwells. Let me say that again. The kingdom is where the king dwells. Uh, we're not used to the idea of kings and uh, uh, how can I say, you know, under this, you know, type of republic uh, that we uh, practice here in the United States, um, you know, does not allow for uh, kingship uh, due to the abuses that came from it in the old world and there was quite a bit that happened um, coming out of the dark ages and uh, and it, the whole of Europe was how can I say uh, you could not seem to uh, get away from uh, persecution uh, of just about all types. And borders were changing constantly, which was causing um, people upheaval and a loss of lands and kings taking over uh, their lands and all that kind of stuff and exerting uh, extra taxes on the people. And uh, again, all this was um, became uh, the anthem of our American culture and basically has become the idea of democracy. Now, uh, we do not live in a pure democracy. Uh, our government was formed as a republic. So with that said, this kind of, um, this kind of keeps us uh, out of connection with kings. I know we can read about them, uh, but we have never lived it and, uh, in this country. And we, uh, uh, we can see how it is now, uh, even the countries that do have kings and queens. Many of them do not have the powers um, that they used to have uh, due to their abuses uh, in the past. And so uh, they have adopted um, some democratic principles uh, within their countries uh, to uh, keep this from being a problem. So I am saying all this to, again, I have to unpack. And, uh, you know, we are looking at these numbers and how are they, uh, how are they concerning? Um, what do they, they give us? So again, that 12 gets us into how can I say the royal chambers? It gets us uh, closer to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Almighty, um, the Creator of the universe. So, this is this is what we have to 
uh, to recognize here, a lot of times these numbers, uh, again, uh, give us an indication of something like seven, holy, and rest, uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, you know, come unto me, all ye that are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you that rest. Listen, that rest uh, uh, is something that came. Uh, we get a portion of it. We get a piece of it. We get the earnest of our inheritance. We get a small piece of it. That is the small piece of our inheritance is um is this thing called the holy ghost or the holy spirit that the lord poured out on man because and and the way that we have to approach there's always an approach to the king and there's always to be a part of his court there has there are uh there are requirements this is why you see you see white robed figures uh, uh, mentioned uh, in the book of Revelation. Um, uh, this, is, this is an ancient requirement that comes down, but it represents something, okay? Um, and uh, we're looking at these representations here as we see in the 50th year you know, that five times 10. Um, <clears throat> basically, uh, Jewish music had has, uh, ancient Jewish music had five octaves, okay? Um, we have, we uh, in our day, and uh, we have what we call um, basically eight, um, uh, steps from one octave to, a, uh, to another, okay? Uh, but in the, uh, in the Hebrew, uh, basically, there's five, okay? There were five pillars, okay, uh, that were important for holding up the structure of the temple, okay? Uh, uh, putting this all together, uh, five has symbolized praise, um, worship, uh, in rest, in Sabbath, okay? Um, and that is very much important that we recognize that. That it is, um, it is not taxation, but it is celebration. Okay, it is celebration and rest. You can go into the most beautiful place, into the place, into the king's court, and you can sit in his court. In the, in the coolness of his temple, from the heat of the sun, and from the heat of your work, and, and from the trouble of your labors, and there you can worship and celebrate because you're in his rest. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, that is so beautiful and so powerful, but this is what is being painted okay, uh, by these numbers, okay, 10 has uh, been used, um, you know, seventh month, the tenth day, uh, we have this day that uh, is called atonement, and it, uh, and let me put it in a equal English way of saying it, at one mint, at one mint. In other words, we become one 
with the king. Wow. We become his family. Not just distant family, but the closest of family. And so this is very, 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 very important in our understanding that what the Lord is doing with us, you know, uh, we, we have something uh, to, you know, live up to and, and something to try to, you know, bring in. Um, uh, uh, to our lives uh, and we have to you know we have to bring that uh, into understanding uh, into our um, how can I say uh, speech our uh, knowledge about who we are and what we are um, it is easy to get pulled down by the influences of the world around us. Some of it we bring on our own. Some of it we uh, cause um, on our own. And, uh, and, and, and we do this. Uh, by, how can I say, getting bogged down and uh, by life. And so uh, we need to realize what we have and who we are and what is yet to come to us, even though we have uh, received a, a small portion, we can celebrate in that small portion. But we've got something better coming in the future. Uh, again, this is why Paul said to live as Christ. What does he mean by to live as Christ? In other words, to live is to suffer like Christ suffered. Okay? Uh, to be ridiculed like Christ was ridiculed. To be made fun of like Christ was made fun of. Okay. To be called, you know, liars without cause or purpose. Okay. Uh, all these different things that uh, Jesus was accused of. Has, has come into uh, center stage. And it has, you know, basically taken over uh, our present world that we live in. Uh, and whatever the scripture defines Man in modern Christianity today has uh, marred and has blemished uh, because they want to be able to do the things that they're not supposed to be doing. And so... Uh, if you can change its appearance, then maybe, you know, that's okay. And uh, the Lord had condemned, uh, how can I say, mankind for this and turning God into uh, a symbol that does not represent him. So, all that aside, um, uh, we have to get into uh, this concept again, Leviticus chapter 25, 
uh, is a lot that we uh, have to look at. And um, yes, we're looking at Jubilee and uh but we're looking at the word redemption now something i want you to um uh, uh something you have to how can i say uh get in your mind and uh you can say it after me kinsman redeemer Okay, you can say it out there together. Kinsman Redeemer. Kinsman Redeemer is one of the most important uh, laws in uh, the um, Old Testament. In fact, we have a record in the Old Testament of someone who did not want to, do, to fulfill the law of the kinsman redeemer. And because of it, they were put to death. So there is, you know, uh, there is, how can I say, several things that come together. So we have to go to the book of Ruth also to get an understanding of this. Um, uh, <clears throat> and we have to put this all together. Because most of you should know who our kinsman redeemer is. Um, uh, in the New Testament, under our new covenant. And if you don't, uh, by the time I'm finished here tonight, you will understand. Okay. If you have forgotten... All right, uh, you need to, you know, open your Bible up here and, and let's, you know, get in uh, to the, the stories uh, that are given to us in the Bible. Um, and uh, you're basically going to need to read Ruth chapter 2, verses 17 through uh, 23. Okay, land, the fruits of it is, now remember what we read in uh, Leviticus. What we read in Leviticus is that uh, God owned the land. And God told the children of Israel in this that they were basically tenant farmers, that this, this land belonged to him. And they were to take care of it. But they had ownership that was given to them. In other words, the land was, uh, was broken down. And uh, basically uh, uh, divided up amongst, amongst the chieftain, uh, chieftains of the tribes. Or the princes uh, of the tribes. Let me say that again, the chieftains, or we would say princes, okay? Um, in other words, uh, the one who carries um, the oldest and, uh, how can I say, the representation of that tribe. Uh, and, uh, there's, there's age involved and then there is, um, bloodline involved. Okay. Uh, and the one that is 
the passer down or the closest to this. So uh, this is all important. You say, well, this is this is confusing. It's giving me a headache. Um, uh, it can can be, but it's the Lord's trying to relay something that um, it can be uh, simple to understand and beautiful uh, in its story. This this story that is in the Book of Ruth is not there by uh, by accident. Some. Uh, in the past, uh, had wondered whether they should put it in the canon or not, along with the book of Revelation. <laughs> and there were some other ones that were questioned, uh, also Song of Solomon. But uh, these, uh, these questions, what brought them up to question was, uh, you know, basically... Um, uh, there wasn't, you know, much instruction in them. Uh, we find a lot of uh, what's going on here is a, a story that, but because it includes the act of kinsman redeemer, uh, it's important. So, let the cat out of the bag. Uh, if you don't know it already, you should know it. Jesus Christ is our kinsman redeemer. That's why you see the record of two lineages within the New Testament. That's why it's so important that you look at these lineages. One goes all the way back to Adam. That's important. Why is that important? because it allows Jesus to be a kinsman. But it goes back and includes Gentiles. Okay? Uh, Jesus had uh, basically people that were not Jewish who became... Uh, how can I say, uh, Jews by faith in the Old Testament. In other words, they decided to turn to the Lord. And Ruth is one of these such, of, uh, such people. That's, it's amazing. But it even goes back uh, even farther than that is when they were going to uh, march around Jericho and spies were sent out. And there was a woman who was, you know, um, uh, let me say it this way. She's basically a barmaid. And in that sense, um, that was never good. She was not a woman of great reputation, but she's seen her way of escaping the bondage of who she was. And she allowed the spies uh, to uh, hide, okay, uh, in her place of abode. And she uh, asked the spies, and this is where they tell them if they, she would um, hang that crimson um ribbon down from her window that the Lord would spare her. Oh, praise God. What's that crimson rib ribbon? What's that red? Uh, that scarlet ribbon stand for? It stands for the blood of Jesus Christ. 
and she was willing to apply that and and uh, put that. And it was the only area of the wall that was not destroyed. And she became one of the ancestors of Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is so, so beautiful. And so this allows, because of the blood, because of the blood, blood's important here. That's why the bloods of bulls and goats could not take away our sin. Because blood is important here. And kinsman blood is important. Very, very important. So if we can take these things back, we can take it all the way back. That it covers all of humanity, the descendants of the sons of Noah. And from those sons, we get uh, the uh, basic beginning 70 nations that were, uh, how can I say it, the Tower of Babel that were split up into the world. And so, um, <clears throat> so again, you know, this thing seven, seven times 10, right? Again, uh, we find this 10th day having to do with atonement. In other words, it's been paid. Jesus Christ is that atonement. Let me say that again. Jesus Christ's blood is that atonement. So uh, we have a way to, how can I say, be a part of that atonement. Lord, help us to remember who we are and help us to know. So, um, uh, basically for your um, reading requirement for our next lesson here, uh, I would like you to read Ruth chapter two uh, and especially focus on uh, uh, well, just that whole chapter, second chapter, will um, lay a lot of things down. And just look at the things that are done within the story. Um, and uh, the nobility of Boaz is second to none. And um, <laughs> I, I gotta gotta say, uh, if you know David got anything um, from Boaz, it would be his nobility, his nobility, and. Uh, I, I just want to say that yes, yeah, Boaz is uh, is in the lineage of David. So, with this again all said, uh, we're going to close here, and uh, I wanted to again go over these numbers. I'm not, not going to go over all the numbers again, but the ones that are concerning this. Seven, ten, five times ten. These things are very, again, very important with what God is trying to do and tell us about who He is. And we go back to the Bible to find it. Let's pray.
Lord Jesus, we thank you, Almighty God, for your blessings, for your goodness. We pray, Lord, that you again would touch every heart and soul, that you would minister mightily. Lord God, as we uh, study these things and we uh, come closer, Lord Jesus, to that time of where we will celebrate and, and uh, your death, burial, and resurrection, Lord, we pray that you would deal with our hearts and souls and that you would minister, Lord God, mightily within us. Lord, that we would have a new countenance. Remind us, Lord Jesus, of what you have done. And Lord, let that spirit, Lord God, and that countenance be upon us every hour of the day. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you for tuning in, and we'll see you.